Hello, Jeff Southern here from Kennesaw, Georgia. Uh, today is July the 4th. I am celebrating my Independence Day with uh, driving my uh, electric thing around. Uh, thought I'd give you guys an update on the progress I've made on the car. Uh, it's been about a year. Um, I have worked on the car probably uh, the better part of a year. Uh, mostly on the weekends, uh, typically one to two days a weekend, maybe four to five hours a day. I estimate that I have about 200 hours probably in the total restoration and conversion of the vehicle to electric drive. Uh, vehicle is running great, uh, thoroughly enjoying driving it around. Uh, recently went to a car show in uh, downtown Ackworth uh, where I met uh, Dennis uh, Carter who was also an EV TV viewer. Enjoyed talking to him and uh, listening to some of his uh, information about electric bicycles he's working on. I think Dennis is definitely ready to uh, to uh, tackle the uh, the full size automo automobile recently, uh, going to hopefully give him any help he needs uh, in, in in making that happen. Um, I'm going to give you an update on the thing. I'd hope to have some driving video, but of course I took this week off of work to finish up some small details on the car. And uh, as luck would have it, it has been raining solid for the last three days. Uh, I mean, it's really raining. Uh, we have flash flood warnings out through most of the state. Uh, this is probably the wettest summer in the last twenty years. Uh, normally, we're actually experiencing a drought this time of year, but uh, right now it's uh, it's full blown rain. Um, just going to give you an update of the car. Uh, um, the car is running extremely well. Um, probably got about two hundred and thirty watts per mile, uh, somewhere in that range, maybe two twenty. Um, car weighs about twenty two hundred pounds, so it seems to fall right in line with Jack's uh, uh, ten ten pound uh, or yeah, yeah, a watt for every 10 pounds worth of car. Uh, seems to be uh, actually quite accurate. Well, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the update. Thought I'd give everybody a walk around of the car. Uh, car's mostly finished now. Um, as you can see, I got the running boards on it. I got the convertible top on it. I've got my rear seats installed, uh, painted, reupholstered on the rear. Um, got my windshield wipers working. Uh, had to replace the uh, windshield wiper motor. It was burnt out on it. Uh, using the standard old 40-year-old uh, wipers. Um, may replace those with something a little more modern. Thought I'd give you a look inside the car. This is a view inside the car. Uh, it's a nice rainy day this 4th of July, so I happen to use a uh, light so you can see everything. Um, what I've done with the car is I've mounted my 4-inch display in the dash, as many of you have seen. I've um, also installed a power-up button. To energize the car, you push the button, and you'll see a little blue LED start to blink. Uh, what that's indicating is that the car is powered up and the key switch is not on. So this blinks to indicate to tell me that it's in a five-minute countdown, so it's going to shut off the power to the car. Uh, as you can see, the uh, touch screen is powering up and should, should come up in a few minutes. thought I'd let you see what the display in the car looks like. Uh, this is a uh, the main screen here, and I'm going to push the uh, reset button. And as you see, if you hold it down long enough, it'll reset the pack to the maximum hours. The uh, variable in blue is the pack voltage. That is accurate to uh, at least a hundredth of a volt. And then the amps, uh, like right now with it powered up, uh, running the 12 volt adapter and a few accessories, uh, it's pulling uh, a little over a quarter amp from the pack. I'm going to turn the key switch on. And I do currently have the uh, main power is off, so I'm going to turn that on. And if you can hear that buzzing noise, that's my contactor in the back of the car back here buzzing away. Uh, thought I'd let you hear this good. Um, that's my 24 volt contactor. I'm going to put a 28 volt contactor in there and see if it'll help with this. So yeah, as you can see, I can switch to... Uh, reverse or forward with this switch. Uh, I can also stop and start the uh, fan on the heat sink. So the fan on the heat sink turns off, fan on the heat sink starts. Uh, there is a trend graph in the car. It'll trend amp draw. Uh, the red is the amp draw and the blue is the uh, pack voltage so you can see how much it sags also have a configuration screen. This allows you to uh, 
set calibration features like the maximum shunt, minimum shunt, the daughter level mode, and the uh, the uh, pack capacity, which I've currently got set to 180 amp hours. Uh, my shunt turned out to be just a hair off, so those are the correct calibrations. That's calibrated with a brand new fluke meter. I'd say they're accurate easily to a hundredth of an amp uh, now. So that's how the system works. That's uh, So basically the touchscreen in the car keeps track, very accurate track of the amp hours. Uh, for example, I'm going to I'm going to turn the headlights on and you'll see the amperage go up when I flip the when I flip the brights on, go up a little more. So it's a very accurate representation of the uh, pack voltage. Um, that's kind of it for what I've programmed so far. I'm going to make it a lot prettier as time goes by. One thing I've done is in the car is installed a uh, amplifier. This is just an MP3 input. I don't have it prettied up yet. I'm going to mount a plate down there to cover everything up. But it does have a remote volume control so I can turn the volume up or down. I'm going to mount a make a plate to go up under the dash here in this area. So the only thing it's going to have, it's going to have a uh, 12 volt adapter for this Bluetooth adapter uh, and uh, uh, a power on off switch for the unit and that's it. Uh, Everything is going to be done with Bluetooth. found a really nice Bluetooth mount. This was for the phone. It expands out, squeeze it together and it locks the phone in place very good. Uh, it happens to actually be for a motorcycle. It has a motorcycle clamp. Uh, works really good for this uh, this grab bar in the front of the car here. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the thing, this over here is the hood release. Uh, of course, that's my power on off button. The uh, the little map light. Uh, I thought it was interesting. The the cover is actually also the switch for this little light. Thought that was kind of interesting. As you can see, this little blue LED button is uh, solid on. That means the car is up, powered on, the switch is on. I'm going to turn the switch off. Here in the main contractor drop out, and then the LED ring starts to blink. Uh, that indicates that I basically got five minutes before the car is going to power itself down. It'll power the display down, which uses a good bit of current. Uh, but if I plug the J1772 charger in, or, or any charger for that matter, uh, it'll immediately uh, realize that it's charging and go back to being solid. So that's how, that's how I've decided to make it work. I'll explain it a little more up under the hood here. For those of you who haven't seen the layout under the hood, I apologize, some of the wiring is going to have to be cleaned up, but uh, I've just got everything wired the way I want it. This is the PLC that I'm using in my car that controls all the functionality of the car. So this is the main processor. This is an 8 channel universal analog input card. And this is a relay card. It has 8 additional relays. The unit itself has two relays across the bottom, and it has uh, four high-speed outputs. Uh, across the top, uh, I have a total of uh, actually um, 10 inputs. Um, four of them are high-speed inputs, and they're actually used for 24-volt inputs. And uh, the other six are, are, are for uh, uh, just general-purpose 12-volt inputs. Uh, for example, the key switch is wired to one of the 12 volt inputs. 24 volt inputs, I'm actually wired over here to my J1772 card. Uh, again, I'll show you that in a second. A um, couple of things of note. Um, a lot of you knew that I was having trouble with the reading the shunt voltage correctly. This is a uh, uh, shunt pack isolation, a shunt tra isolation transformer. What it does, it takes the 0 to 50 millivolts from my 800 amp shunt and it converts it into plus or minus 10 volts that run over here in the analog card can read. This also offers 3,000 volt electrical isolation between the pack and your control system. Uh, as many of you know, my, my car winds up having to have two buses on it, so this is a 24 volt DC to DC power supply. This happens to be an Allen Bradley one that we sell. Um, it can provide up to 50 watts of power, which is more than enough for uh, the PLC operation. I think the PLC operation totals about 50, uh, 50 millivolts off the main pack, something, something of that range. That, that powers uh, the, the, the PLC, the I.O. cards, and this, uh, this shunt isolator. In addition, I also have a pack voltage isolator. Uh, this device actually uh, uh, measures, the, takes the pack voltage and converts it into plus or 0 to 10 volts. So instead of 0 to 150 volts, it's 0 to 10 volts. 
Again, that goes back into the analog input card here so I can accurately measure the volt pack voltage. I've checked it with my uh, meter and it's accurate to a hundredth of a volt. Um, one thing I do a little different is because I do have two different DC to DC converters. This is my Meanwell uh, 12 volt. I believe this is a 450 watt. Um, I use a relay, 24 volt relay, to switch the pack voltage onto the 12 volt. So I can actually power down the 12 volt bus independently of the 24. That just reduces power when it's sitting idle. Uh, I've checked everything and my power is down to, uh, I think it's 52 millivolts when it's just idle. The car's charged and off. Um, again, as I said, I mounted my J1772 connector here. That is actually wired into the PLC so I'll know when the, when the uh, pack is connected. The uh, Alcon charger has a, uh, has a wire that allows you to start and stop the charging. So I've got that wired into a relay output on the PLC so that when I get to a certain voltage, I just shut the charger off. Uh, that constant voltage stage lasts about five minutes. It wreaks all kind of havoc with the battery. You're, you're talking about less than a mile's worth of range. I think it's absolutely silly that anybody even bothers with the uh, constant voltage stage of the charging. So that's kind of what I have under the hood here. Um, you have the, mo the most negative bus rail, the most positive bus rail, a couple of fuses for my DC to DC converters, a uh, little fuse hiding up under there for the J1772. Um, this is one of my front battery boxes. Uh, this is, uh, contains six cells. I like Jack's uh, little battery booties, but I uh, found this works pretty good too. This is just some uh, exercise mat. Uh, you basically put this under your exercise machines to keep from scuffing up your floor. It cuts easy. It is completely uh, non-conductive and uh, works very well. Actually, you heard the power cut off. The, uh, it timed out on the five minutes, so now the only thing powered up is the PLC and the 24-volt power supply. So the 12-volt power supply powered itself down. Um, I like these uh, things. This, this way, if the car ever flips up or bounces up, the batteries can't touch the aluminum battery box they're made of. It uh, just keeps people's fingers out of it. Um, also, if you'll see the, the holes here, I've got some PIMS in here. So there'll be, a, there'll be a solid lid here. Of course, I have the 10 cells up under this one, which go down in a little hole. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how it's laid out under the hood. I uh, just thought I'd give you a quick, quick overview of that. Walk around here back, and you can take a look at the... Uh, uh, the rear of the car. Uh, one thing I've done recently is I have put all LED lighting in. So all of the lights around the car are LED. I believe you can actually see the little LEDs through the clear lens of this one. So you can see the little LED bulbs. All I did is just replace the bulbs that were in the car. Uh, of course the all-important EV thing tag. And this is what it looks like in the rear of the car here. Uh, you can see I got the two, two battery boxes. Again, this battery box is covered with this, uh, this, this exercise underlayment material, exercise machine underlayment material. Um, my Curtis controller uh, wired directly to the AC50. This is the offending contactor. I did put a little black piece of rubber between the contactor and the firewall, and that really helped the uh, noise level a little bit. Uh, this is my 12-volt uh, fuse for the back of the car. Uh, the red wire brings in 12 volts from the DC to DC converter and the black wire brings in the switched voltage. That is the uh, correct uh, color coding in the uh, Volkswagen. Uh, this is a 100 amp fuse. Uh, if you'll see the smaller cable here, this one is the most, this is the most positive part of the car, or, or the ba battery pack. It's actually this terminal up under here and this cable simply is routed over and into the box. Uh, so it's a good place for me to pick up 24. I, I did put a ferrite core around here. I found this actually cuts down on a good bit of electrical noise coming from the uh, Curtis controller. So uh, these little ferrite cores, their little clamp-ons uh, might be fairly handy for people to have. This is just a little uh, um, uh, two-gauge two cable. Uh, it, it'll handle up to 100 amps. So you know, if I ever get a charger that can handle more than 25 or 30 amps, I'll worry about it. Uh, this just goes up to the front of the car and again gives me the, the, the plus pack voltage up at the front of the car. Um, hiding under here is the fuse for the uh, um, um, Curtis controller from the pack voltage. This is the little relay that comes with the kit. So you take your 12 volt switched voltage, which comes from there, uh, goes through the relay, and then this provides 120 volts to the, uh, to the, the wiring nest over here. Um, 
that is the main fuse for the power pack. This uh, connects the front to the rear power packs. As you can see, that goes up to the front of the car. Uh, still find it odd that you wind up using a 400 amp fuse for a 650 amp circuit, but uh, if you run the numbers and look at the graph, that is actually what it comes out to. Have a little grease under here. Uh, one of the uh, one of the um, uh, universal joints came, got a little bit loose, and uh, one of the bolts backed off a little bit, and a little grease came out. Uh, not enough to hurt anything. Um, just thought I'd let you see what the back of the car looks like. One thing I did put on the front of the car is a tow bar hitch. Uh, this is uh, uh, welded to the bumper. There's a piece of steel that's under here that connects back to the torsion tubes. So you're actually not pulling on the bumper, you're pulling on the torsion tubes. Thought having a, a tow bar where I can hook it up to my uh, truck for towing around here might be pretty handy. Don't know if I would drive it all the way up to Missouri from uh, Atlanta, Georgia uh, with a tow hitch, but uh, I guess I'll find out how well it works first, but I'll most likely put the car on a trailer. Just thought you might be interested in seeing that. Well, that's it, guys. I just thought I'd give you a quick update on the car. I really wish the weather were better so I could give you some video of actually driving the car. I can't tell you how much fun it is to drive. Um, everywhere I go, people swarm around this car. Uh, the car itself gets attention, and then when people find out it's converted to electric drive, uh, usually you answer a few hundred questions uh, on the spot. I um, think it's actually probably the only car I've ever owned that women seem to like. Um, I've owned high-performance sports cars and everything, but women actually like this car. Uh, my cousin told me that she thinks that uh, it's because women think it's a Barbie car. But uh, I actually love driving it. If you're thinking about doing a build, I really think you should. Uh, I think you will enjoy it more than most of the manufacturer's cars, with maybe the exception of the Tesla Model S. I mean, that car is just uh, probably one of the best cars ever made, period. So I uh, hope to see everybody at EVCon. Looking forward to it. We're about a month away. So uh, hope to see everybody there. So long from Kennesaw, Georgia.